CDD Ghana and Edwards review of the education sector medium term development plan for 2018 to 2021 identifies the inequitable distribution of education inputs, including school infrastructure, teaching and learning resources, trained teachers, single sex toilet facilities, ICT centers seating and writing places as key drivers of poor learning outcomes in deprived districts compared to endowed districts. Children living in marginalized and deprived communities are faced with a lack of exercise and textbooks, libraries, computers, school decks, learner-friendly classrooms, among others. According to the Ministry of Education, there are about 5,400 schools under trees, sheds, and dilapidated structures, whilst about 20% of classrooms require major refurbishment. In addition, there are about 4,000 primary schools without junior high schools, causing up to 28% of primary school graduates to drop out of basic education in the northern region alone. Relatedly, 40% of basic school children do not have desks, with many sitting on stones, improvised stools, or laying on the floor, affecting the quality of teaching, learning, and learning outcomes. When you enter into the class, you can see that there's no chairs. You don't have furniture for the children. So now, KG1 and 2, some of them, they are lying on the floor writing. When we come to the logistics books, for that one, we don't have some at all. So through capitation, we will be able to buy only few books and we share it to the teachers for them to use it to feed the children. According to the Ministry of Education, about 31% of basic schools do not have access to toilet facilities, a situation that makes the school environment unfriendly for girls, thereby affecting their attention in school. We don't have a school building. In my menses, I cannot come to school because there's no flowing water. We are unable to stay in school when it rains. Even when it rains during school hours, the school has to close and my children come home prematurely. As you can see, this is our urinal. It just broke down, uh, I think, was it? yesterday or a day before yesterday because of the raining and you could see the type of material that they used to build the urina so it, is, it, it doesn't make it strong they enter into their menstruation period that's one of the challenges that we face because they don't have enough money to even support themselves you know? so they wouldn't even like to come to school uh -huh. so they would just stay in law unless that, uh, that this or that is passed before they will come The outcome of the poor learning environment in deprived district is responsible for the poor BEC performances compared to that of endowed districts. According to CDD Ghana and Edwards, there exists a 14% point difference between the BEC performance of deprived districts compared to endowed districts. 68% for deprived and 82% for endowed districts. The severe deprivation is even more consequential when students have to transition from primary six to junior high school. Stakeholders within deprived communities are urging government to, among other things, provide infrastructure and ensure an equitable system for distributing teachers and teaching and learning materials to improve teaching and learning outcomes. It's about to rain, so we are just getting ready to close the children like that. Up to date, our children have to carry their own furniture to school, and teachers could get posted here and up abandoning posts. We are pleading for government support for the school. The poor learning environments and learning outcomes in public basic schools in deprived communities is as a result of inadequate funding of education. 
Between 2011 and 2020, the proportion of government expenditure on education declined from 27% to 17%, while education spending as a percentage of GDP spending declined from 6.3% to 4.6%. Further evidence of inadequate and inequitable financing of basic education is observed in the decline of basic education share of the education expenditure from 49% in 2011 to 41% in 2020. Welcome back and thank you very much. Uh, we're still on the Poppy Appeal, and that's for the Veteran Association of Ghana. And we're supporting uh, retired soldiers, those who fought in the First and Second World Wars, and those who also have served with the colors and have retired. We want to make sure that their lives are comfortable. So make sure you grab a puppy, and by the 11th of November, it will be done. So uh, don't wait, grab a puppy and make a kind donation in respect of our, um, our veterans. Also, thank you to Grant Park Clothing. I done so much for my outfit. 020-985-5696. Again, 020-985-5696. And but there are about 4,000 primary schools without JHS, causing up to 40% of primary school graduates to drop out of the basic education in the Northern region alone. Now, relatedly, 40% of basic school children do not have decks with many sitting on stones, improvised tools, or laying on a line on the floor. Well, that's, that's not a pleasant one, affecting the quality of teaching and learning and the learning outcomes that are expected. According to the Ministry of Education, um, about 5,000 uh, students in Ghana, uh, statistical service from 2021 census indicate that 1.4 million children um, aged between 4 and 18 are not in school. Meanwhile, we have FQ. So I brought in two gentlemen who know their beings in terms of education in Ghana, Mr. Chega and also Kofi Asari of the Africa Education Board to guide us through why we are where we are and what we need to do to get out of this maze and the doldrum. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Thank you. And I see you're you. rocking your puppies as well. Yeah. yeah Super. Why, why, why are there key financing issues in our education? Because all of what we talk about largely is related to finance. Mr. Chika, let me start with you. Well, um, there are key financing issues. Again, everything is measured around GDP. Right. So again, if you don't make the required GDP, it mm. becomes very difficult to meet the benchmark that uh, we have all internationally agreed right. that uh, should be set aside for delivering programs mm. like education. Mm. And, and the conditions, I mean, the, the preamble I read, mm -hmm. mirrors a very drastic situation. Mm. You know, children, they could end up in future with back aches and, you know, you could not get a bit of patriotism from them and all of that. How does that come to you as, as a key watcher who has worked in the education sector, yeah, for, I, especially in a basic school? It's, 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 it's a sad situation, especially when you go to see it. And I've actually seen quite a lot of it in mm. different forms. Um, and all of it has to do with um, the skewing of the education financing system, uh, which tends to present a situation mm. where we don't look at what we really need mm -hmm. to do. Mm. You know, and, and I, I mean, there are uh, many examples in, in terms of giving money to, uh, let's say, MPs, you know, to, to go and give to education directors to you know, do something. I mean, this whole longitudinal system of um, working with the finances creates a bit of a problem, mm. no, not a bit, mm. but a big problem, big problem for us in terms of how some of these things mm. uh, are happening. So when it happens like that, you know, parents, especially in the rural areas, who go to the farm, let their children follow their mm. brothers and mm. sisters into mm. school, mm. and then they sit down and um, they wait for school feeding, mm. and they eat and go. Kofi, there's low investment, especially within the basic school. Why is that? For... For almost every country in Africa um, that has started a free secondary education, mm -hmm. there are always challenges surrounding how you manage your secondary education right. expenditure in relation to basic. Bear mm -hmm. in mind that basic education is a fundamental right. And that is the challenge that Ghana is also going through. If you look at the trends in financing basic education, since 20. 
14 when we started committing more than 20% to secondary education. Mm -hmm. You realize that any time secondary education share of the discretionary budgets mm -hmm. goes up, basic comes down. Now let me explain this. When, when we are analyzing financing of basic versus secondary education, mm -hmm. we, we, don't, we don't analyze the compensation, the salaries. We analyze the discretional budget. The discretional budget or the discretionary expenditure is the aspect of the expenditure incurred in goods and services. Mm. That is where teaching and learning materials, food, and other inputs required to deliver education is spent. And then CAPEX, which is capital expenditure, right. where schools are constructed. Mm. If you do an analysis of the discretionary expenditure between secondary and basic, you realize that basic education for share of the um, discretionary education expenditure has dropped from 18%, for instance, in 2014 or so, to 6.5% in 2020. Secondary is now receiving close to 50% mm. of mm. the discretionary mm. education expenditure. Mm. It means that more and more resources, mm. okay, for education inputs and then infrastructure financing it's going into secondary but, education. But is it twice the case or twice that, that you, of you would have the basic school feeding the secondary education? So what are you feeding into the secondary education then? Yeah, so what it means is that when you have such a situation, mm. there is some incongruity in the sense that basic education is a base. That's a foundation. That's right. It has about 6 million learners. Okay, so the infrastructure gap or deficits in basic education mm. is the biggest. 25% of basic primary schools do not have junior high schools. Mm. You mentioned 4,000. Mm. Yeah. They don't have junior high schools. Okay. And you have 5,400 schools taking place under trees and ships. And there are thousands of communities that do not have junior high schools. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and thousands and tens of thousands of communities without primary schools. But so, FQ persists. But we've been running FQ for 17 years. So when you look at the SESCA data from the 2021 housing and population census, indicating that 1.4 million children are not in school, aged between 4 and 18. Mm. Out of this number, 1 million have never been in school at all. Mm. 400,000 have been in school and dropped out. Okay, so when you are confronted with a situation, you must know that the only way out is to be cost efficient in Secondary education. How, how do we do that when the government is big on free SHS? Yeah, so that's, the, that, that's, that's, that's how we need to be strategically intentional mm. because the only way you can expand access to secondary education is to expand access to and completion of basic. Let me give you an example. Mm. This VC we wrote, okay, mm. 2022 VC. You know, for the first time, the number of students that were the VC re reduced. That's right. By over 30,000. That's right. Okay, we did an analysis of it mm. and listen carefully. In the three northern regions, I'm talking about the three new northern regions, Savannah, Northeast, and the northern region. In 2019, out of about 70,000 students mm. that completed primary six in 2019, mm. only 60% mm -hmm. wrote the BC this year. It means 40% did not try the students who completed primary six in the three northern regions in 2019 mm -hmm. dropped out because the schools were not there but, or because but in this three regions in these three regions 60 mm percent -hmm. of primary schools do not have junior high schools so well, you see how the data we, we keep changing we, out we, manifests we, we are in a more difficult situation than i assumed mr check about now we're going to the imf yeah what would that mean if without IMF, we already have this. Now we're going to the IMF. Haircuts, no haircuts, that confusion is there. Mm -hmm. What would that mean for, uh, in terms of hope for those in the basic school and those who want to access basic education as well? In fact, you used a word that I really wanted to use, hope. Mm. We are hoping that the IMF will be... Well, in fact, they are already privy to some of this information mm. and mm. would know that there's a real crisis in our education system. Mm. We have not set the uh, priorities right mm. and this is the time and this new management of the system mm. that we have to really put the priorities in their right uh, places. Other than that, it will become very difficult. And interestingly enough, I mean, I've, I've not heard a lot of the media talking about what uh, has been done recently. The president has been appointed as the president mm -hmm. 
who should go around uh, the African countries asking them to make sure that they spend the amount of money that they, it's required for education. 20% of public education. 20%. That's right. So again, you see, uh, I, I don't know, if I, what I found out, it came to me as a great joy. Mm. Because again, here is somebody who himself is not meeting that thing and is going out and I can see the kind of challenge he will be having when he goes but, but, out but to Mr. meet Shiga, his colleagues. All this comes, emanates from the law, policy, mm -hmm. and implementation. Yes. Where's the gap? In between the three, where does the gap fall? In between the three, one of the gaps is priority, and the other one is what you have in your consolidated fund. So again, if you are cash trapped, then you are doing a lot of uh, cut and paste in certain, in certain places. Mm. And then you have priority. For example, free SHS. Right. When you put free SHS into the mix, then it becomes very complicated. And let me give you an example. In 2007, mm -hmm. President Kufour launched the reform. And that reform, we did everything at the ministry level to try and uh, put the changes that we wanted. And we were told to budget for it. Tony Osei Akuto, Honorable, mm. was the uh, Minister for Finance at the time. And he's a personal friend. And he told me that, no, you can't do that. The budget that we presented was more than the budget itself that we had as a country. But he told us to put everything in. So again, when you do the dynamics, then you see that we should, we should get more money than we have been putting into the education system to be able to catch up yeah. with the priorities and also reduce the gaps that are happening. I, I come resources. to you, gentlemen, for recommendations. Now we have diagnosed the problem. We know what it is. But what should duty bearers be doing in terms of recommendation to them? Where do we go, Kofi? Yeah, uh, Johnny, I um, before I come to the recommendation, let me quickly say that. So the story I was telling about the train of regions mm -hmm. ends at a point where once only 60% of primary six graduates in 2019 were able to write a BEC this year, mm. which means 40% dropped out because obviously mm. of the lack of junior high schools mm. in 60% mm. of the schools. And it means that fewer students from the northern region will even have an opportunity to go and enjoy the free senior And this school. will be year on year. Yes, so you are, you, are, you are going to have a case where fewer students from the most deprived part of this country mm. will ever have an opportunity mm. to stay, to stay to free enjoy the big senior of the high school. Cake. That is, for me, the mm. main thing. So mm. the best yeah, way right. to enhance right. access to free secondary education mm. yeah. is to enhance access to and completion of basic, basic education. education. Now, then everybody can compete effectively and efficiently. Exactly. So we are all enjoying the national cake. If you don't complete junior high school, where, where do you go? How, how do you enjoy free senior high mm. school? Mm. Now, recommendations. If you know right BEC, what do you gain? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Because you have no business in secondary school, right? Now, you see, the first recommendation is that we must increase our spending in the education sector. Mm. Between 2012 and now, in 2012, we were mm. committing about 7% right. of our GDP to education. Mm. As of 2020, we are doing about 4.3%, 4 4.3, 4 4 4.4%. It means that in terms, even though the economy mm. of Ghana has doubled mm -hmm. between 2016 and now, even though the economy has doubled, okay, the GDP has doubled, the percentage allocation of GDP to education has declined by two percentage points. Mm. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is that we need to ensure that we target the ceiling of six percent equivalent of GDP allocation to education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then ensure that as we are allocating more to education, at least thirty percent of the discretionary expenditure is going into basic education. Mm. In that case, we should be seeing a quite about twenty percent of infrastructure investment i mean 20 percent of the basic education and expenditure envelope going to infrastructure finally get fund is the major source of financing infrastructure right this year get fund allocated only 16 percent to basic education and 44 percent to secondary 40 mm. percent tertiary basic education must be the priority and so the final recommendation is that mm. we want to see basic education receiving at least a third of get funds infrastructure allocation mm. in subsequent years. If we're able to do this in the medium term, by 2025, we should be able to significantly bridge the infrastructure right. gap in the basic Mr. Education. Chika, you've been in the big seat at the Ghana Education Service Director General. What do you recommend? 
Well, again, I think that um, we need to rearrange the priorities a bit. Uh, we are actually, in the, under the current situation, we have come back to uh, the beginning of the millennium, 2000, right. when we set ourselves a number of targets. Mm. We have jettisoned all those targets and are virtually doing something new. So let's go back to basics. Go back to basics means you have said that you spend close to 50% of your discretionary money on education. Mm. You have also said that be whatever the cost, you will put 6% mm. of your GDP on education. Right. Do that and ensure that you have put in the fundamental things such as infrastructure that are very, very necessary for the conduct of serious business mm. at the basic education level. Other things like uh, free um, school feeding mm. and other things are real support in terms of you know, pulling people, pulling people into people the system. Come, like and when you pull system. people into the system, then you are saying that I am going to make it a certainty. Mm. I suggested to somebody from the World Bank, as we walked, we drove in Accra, and uh, we saw a lot of people buying and selling, and some children who should be in school right. selling on the right. road. Right. And I told him that well, I'm looking forward to a day that we can't find any small boy on the road in Ghana. I said, yeah, you can't do it because you don't have the schools. <laughs> let, me, let me end with this, put you on the spot. There's a, a director general mm. who has been appointed. Yeah. The teachers are not happy about it. Yeah. You have been in that seat before, a trained teacher. Yeah. What do you say? Well, I support the, uh, the efforts being done by the, uh, the teacher unions right. in terms of ensuring that the government does the right thing. And uh, you know, this what was the right thing? And the right thing is that go according to the procedure. The constitution defines how people are appointed mm. within the public service. Right. The GES is a public service. Therefore, go by those conditions. And then the convention is that the, the, the head of the GES should be a professional teacher. That's right. And we have always had non-professional teachers who have never been able to rise up to where they want to push this gentleman to. And that cannot happen. No. Okay. So you're asking the president effectively to let him go. So definitely, uh, he should let him go, and then he takes a time, look at uh, the system, and select somebody for us. I'm grateful for your time. Charles Chega has been former director general of the Ghana Education Service and also Kofi Asari of the Africa Education Watch. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. We've been talking about education in Ghana, okay, basic education, and the inadequacies that we're faced with and confronted with and how we need to get around it. I hope the authorities listen to the recommendations made by these giants and also get our children in school effectively. But